We're going to get into a new type of game, which is the top-down action-adventure puzzle game, like Zelda. But those can be kind of complicated, so we're going to learn some of the basic concepts through a few other games first, and ease ourselves into it. The first one we're going to make is Sokoban, which, if you're unfamiliar, is a puzzle game where you push boxes around and try and get them into their proper places. So over here in the assets, I have created a sprite player, which is 32 by 32, and the origin point is at 00. zero. It has four different sub-images in it, with this little bulldozer pointing down, up, left, and right. And this order is going to be important because we need to keep track of the sub-images. And then I've also created a sprite wall, which is just a 32 by 32 block of some color. We're not going to see this wall, so it doesn't really matter. But the origin point is at 0, 0. I've also created objects from them, an object player, which is visible and solid, and the object wall, which for right now is going to be visible. We'll turn this off later, but it's also solid. And then I've just created a room called Room Level 1. So let's start by adding the movement actions to the player. So open Object Player. And the first thing we need to do is establish its initial sprite. We have four sub-images in our sprite player, so it's just going to cycle through them unless we tell it to stop. So let's add an event, create, come over to Main 1, and change sprite. We will set the sprite to Sprite Player, sub-image 0, speed of 0. So the default setting will be in the down position. Now before we start adding the movement actions, we need to consider how the game will work. Sokoban is basically a maze game where you have to precisely navigate your way through various passages. So that means we're going to have to line our player up precisely because we don't want the player to have to struggle with moving themselves pixel perfect. That'll just create frustration and no one will want to play the game. Fortunately, it's very simple. We'll just have the object snap itself to the grid in the room. So let's add an event, keyboard, and we'll start with the down key. The first action we need to set is another change sprite. Change it into the sprite player, subimage 0, speed of 0. So to get the player to snap to the grid, we could just use our jump to position movement action and bring the player down 32 pixels. Some Sokoban games do that, but 32 pixels is actually quite a lot. The jump is going to be very noticeable. Since my player is a bulldozer, I would like it to have a smooth movement down the screen. So instead of using jump to position, I'm going to come up here to move fixed. Drag that down. I'm going to set it in the down direction at a speed of 4. In this case, we'll have to do something else to keep the object aligned to the grid. So we're only going to allow the player to move if it's already in alignment. And the way we check for that is over in the control tab, up in our questions, and we're looking here in the bottom right, check grid. Drag that above the move fixed, and we need to set this to our grid. Now my room is 640 by 480 with a grid of 32, like I normally do. So we want the snap horizontal and snap vertical to match that. So we'll change from 16 to 32. So now we're only going to get this movement if we're already aligned to the grid. And what that's going to do is basically keep the object aligned to the grid, because as soon as it matches up, then it will run this check again. So now let's go ahead and duplicate this for the other keys. We'll just duplicate event, keyboard up, duplicate event, keyboard left, duplicate event, keyboard right. And now we have to go in and change a few things. So starting with the keyboard right, we'll come to our change sprite, and the sub-image we want will be 3, because that's the last one in the sequence. We also need to change the direction from down to right. Come to our up, change the sprite into sub-image 1, and the direction to up, and then finally, the left one, change this to sub-image 2, and change the direction to the left. Now there's something else we have to account for. When we do a move fixed, it's giving the object a constant speed, which means it's just going to keep going in that direction until we change it or stop it. 
So what we could do is we could come to Add Event, Key Release, and go through all of these keys so that when we release the key we could then set the movement to stop speed of zero. But that adds a lot of unnecessary events. There's an easier way of doing this. And that is going to be in the keyboard event all the way down at the bottom, No Key. So the actions in here are going to trigger whenever No Key is being pressed. So we'll add our move fixed in here, but first we need to make sure that we're lined up with the grid so that we don't just stop in between grid lines. So we'll come over here to our check grid, change this to 32 by 32, come to move, move fixed, select the stop, speed of zero. So now the player should move and stop while aligned with the grid. Let's go ahead and put in the final bit, which is the collision with the wall. So add event, collision, object wall. And here we're just going to come over to move fixed, tell it to stop, speed of zero. We don't need to check for alignment because the object wall is the same size as the player and will already be aligned to the grid. So go ahead and close this and then open up our room level one. We won't bother with the background for right now. Come over to our objects. I'm just going to place a single wall and an object player and we'll be able to use the wall as a reference to show that we are moving 32 pixels every time. So close the room and test. Okay, so I'll move left, down, right, up, and you can see that I am keeping myself aligned to the grid. And when I let go, it keeps moving until it's snapped to a grid line. Now let's try and move into the block, and we stop. Let's move on and start creating a room.